So, um, so then this relates to the realm not only of abortion, we take a step back, this realm of contraception, whether it's um, condoms or the pill or Depo-Provera or Norplant or RU-46, morning after pill, sterilization, whatever these things are, uh, the use of mechanical, chemical, or medical procedures to present, prevent conception from taking place as a result of sexual intercourse uh, is always gravely evil and intrinsically evil. Why? Because it's against the nature of the action. Um, the act of, of, of marital relations is meant to be about babies and about bonding. That's the nature of the action. It's a total gift of self in a baby-making way. And whenever someone separates the procreative and unitive elements, they're destroying the nature of the act. Nutrition, eating food, is meant to um, put food in your belly to, nutrate, to give you nutrition. But if, so if I, but if I just eat for the pleasure of it and then throw up, eat and throw up, eat and throw up, I'm going against the nature of, of the whole purpose of eating food. And um, that's going to be wrong. That's, you know, that's bulimia. So this, this, the, the action needs to be respected. It's a, so dividing those things against its nature, therefore it's immoral. Um, and every, actually, every Christian group on the planet before 1930 taught that it was, was wrong, taught that contraception was gravely wrong. In 1930 at the Lambeth Conference, the Anglican Church changed its teachings and every other group after that, except the Catholic Church, followed suit. The Catholic Church doesn't change its teachings. Our teachings are from Jesus Christ. Um, and then that's where the whole realm of the, the real tragedy is that most of these forms of contraception actually also cause chemical abortions. You know, the, the pill and, um, and some of the like IUDs, some of the ways they work is that they change the lining of the inside of the woman's body so that a newly conceived life can't implant and is, is aborted. Um, and the tragedy is there that the numbers, as I mentioned at, at the homily, is, is staggering. You know, there's 1.2 1, 1. Uh, or 1.3 million physical abortions each year in the United States. Uh, Physicians for Life estimate um, 10 million chemical abortions a year, just three times as many people being killed than are being born in the United States. Um, and so these things, so be, but, but this is the delusion of our society. They'll say, well, but life doesn't begin until implantation. What? And so they'll say, so they'll say the morning after pill isn't to cause abortions because they just lie. They just change when life begins. Or they'll say RU486 doesn't do that. Well, no, it actually does. People that take RU486 um, will have body parts fall out of them. I mean, that's horrific, traumat horrifically traumatizing. IUDs, that's the only way it works. Um, that's why, I mean, I, I remember um, the time I, I won't do a marriage if a couple is using an IUD. I, I just think it's immoral. When, I, when a couple gets married in the Catholic Church, they, I asked them the question, will you receive children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ in his church? If they have an IUD in, they have a device in their body to make sure that they cannot receive children lovingly from God. I was like, oh, this ain't going to happen. This ain't gonna, no, you, that's like saying, that's like saying um, will, will you love and honor each other as man and wife for the rest of your lives? Yes. Well, no, you're going to punch your wife in the face as you say it. No, I'm sorry. This is not going to work. Uh, which, of course, would be messed up. All right, so it violates the marriage vows. They're not open to life, not giving all of yourself, the most, especially the most powerful part, and encourages sexual indulgence and objectification, kicks the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, out of the bedroom and thus one's own life. Um, and this is the realm of sterilization as well. People will, will have their tubes tied or have vasectomies, and those are, those are sinful, gravely sinful as well, because the body is made to be respected, not destroyed. Um, when people do that, it's a permanent form of contraception. They're mutilating their bodies uh, instead of respecting them. Now, people will ask, well, Father, what do you do if you've done that? Well, you have to repent, you have to go to confession, and really change that mindset so there's not that contraceptive mindset. And then, and then, then you should, um, some th I think it's very important. Uh, and some, some pro-life doctors will do it for free. They'll They'll tell you whether it's possible to undo that damage or not. Sometimes it's possible, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's financially possible, and sometimes it's financially not. But the intent to be forgiven, then you have to have that intention um, to be open to life, so that God, if wishes to work a miracle, He can, and to really be repentant. Um, but that the sin can be forgiven. Um, but I think it's a lot of times in our culture, people think, well, I'll do this, then I'll just go to confession, and then, then we're set. I kind of tricked the church. 
Well, you have to have the only that has to have that intention to be open to life. Um, and I think if someone has the means um, to seek that reversal, because it does have a negative effect on a person's marriage, just like using contraception would. It fosters that objectification because there's no, there's no connection to life there. Um, if you've, you're missing one of the whole aspects of it, it's unitive and procreative, so now it just becomes unitive and pleasure. Well, if that's the unit, that's the, if that's the focus, then you're missing this whole area. You're gonna, it's, that's going to lead to a disrespect. Okay. And this is where the whole realm of natural family planning comes in. Then, working with God's design and abstaining from intercourse when a woman is fertile, if there's a legitimate reason. Uh, so, natural family planning, a 99% effective way of what, knowing when a woman is fertile and when she's not. And if they think they have legitimate, serious reasons for not having a child right then, you know, it's not because they want to buy a Lexus. Uh, buy a new you know, Ferrari, it's because you know, they have legitimate reasons, then they just don't do baby-making actions when they don't want to make a baby. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty straight, straightforward. And the divorce rate for couples that practice NFP is actually, um, some studies say 1%, some studies say 2%, some studies say 4%, um, versus the 56% average in our, in our culture. Why? Because it fosters a treating of the body as a sacred place. Um, fosters communication about a woman's fertility. And fertility, I saw a t-shirt, um, I saw a t-shirt on a, a website today that says fertility is, or that um, pregnancy is not a disease. Uh, and that's what our culture is, is really treating things like, right? It's treating women's fertility as a disease to be de destroyed. Um, this whole medical field in our, our, our medical world now really sees a woman's body and a woman's fertility as, as something almost evil that needs to be destroyed and suppressed rather than what the church teaches, that it's something sacred and powerful. It's like a tabernacle, something sacred and powerful where God can create new human life. Uh, it needs to be respected at all costs, you know, respected greatly, of course. 